Welcome back to Traveling Dice. I'm Jason. I have a unique project here for you today, which is a Valentine's Day box. My daughter is a second grader, and she has requested that her Valentine's Day box be turned into a princess's castle with working drawbridge in front of the card slot. So if this is the first video of mine you're seeing, you probably don't want to subscribe to this channel. I hope you enjoy this particular video, but this channel usually pertains specifically to tabletop gaming. If you're one of my return subscribers, uh, if you want to skip this one, no worries. This is kind of a one-off, uh, unique project, but it does pertain to terrain building in general. So I think some of these things apply, and if you're a dad, it might be helpful. Uh, so, And I will note, this is probably the first time in YouTube history that a content creator is telling people not to subscribe and not to watch their video. But here we go. The first thing that I'm working on here is constructing the two towers that are going to go on each side of the castle. And I go with cardboard here. I figure it's readily available, probably at most households, definitely readily available at my household. And I measure it out to be the proper height for the castle. And then I, I cut it. I do use a carpenter square to try to make sure that the the corners are all 90 degrees and it's nice and square. Uh, and that will help your final product be flush. And then I measured out the circumference of the cylinder that I wanted to make based on the box. And then I simply cut out that length to make the the proper cylinder and then i made that exact piece twice so i just traced it out and then cut it out again so i had two uh, identical pieces or as identical as they possibly could be at this point i'm going to glue them together uh, glue the seam together i'm going to hold it together with masking tape and i'm going to use eileen's tacky glue eileen's tacky glue is a glue that you can get at most craft stores. And typically I also can find it in the crafting section at Walmart. It's kind of similar to Elmer's glue or what's often referred to as PVA glue. It's just on the thicker side. So it will uh, come out in a thicker consistency. It's um, a little bit thicker in terms of working with it. Um, but other than that, it essentially functions the same. It is a water soluble glue. So I'm gluing these together along the seam and then I'm gonna let that dry for several hours. Now I will point out that you don't have to necessarily make these cylinders out of cardboard, right? So you're just looking for things that are, uh, are cylinders. So if you happen to see a, a Kleenex cylinder and it's the right size for this, perfect, um, right? You're, you're steps ahead here. Uh, if you're a consumer a eater of the Quaker Oats, and those frequently come in, in a cylinder that's actually quite nice for various projects, then yeah, use two of those if they're the right size. So I, I definitely don't think that this is the best way. It's probably the cheapest way, uh, unless you already have access to something that was going to get thrown out anyways. I did briefly consider going to Home Depot and buying some like plumbing pipe, plastic plumbing pipe that was three inches in diameter. The problem there, and I did scout it out, was that it came in like a 12 foot section and it was like $40. So I was only going to use a small fraction of that. Each tower ended up being, I think, roughly 11 inches in height. So I was going to use roughly one sixth of what I purchased um, and it was more than I wanted to spend. And then I was going to have to store the remainder for future projects. So I just decided that, you know, most DIY project um, Valentine's Day boxes probably aren't going to utilize that. If you happen to have it anyways, yeah, I would probably use something like that. It's, it's a perfect cylinder. Uh, it's perfectly round. And then it it's, saves you some time as well. You will need to prime it before painting it. But... Uh, I think something like that's a great option. So look around what you have at home. The tacky glue holding these pieces together can take a couple hours to thoroughly dry, but the masking tape um, will hold them together as they dry and the, the curvature of the cardboard at this point um, won't cause it to have a lot of force trying to pull it apart. And the tacky glue does set up initially fairly quickly. It's, it's surprisingly strong. Um, but again, it, to completely dry, it does take a little bit of time. 
as the towers are drying, I go ahead and start working on the castle door. And I take another um, piece of cardboard here that is square, and I lay it down so that it's flush at the bottom with the lid for the Valentine's Day box. And this is going to allow me to trace the slit opening onto the cardboard. And then I can simply make my door just slightly large enough to cover that slit. I don't want to make it overly large, but I do want to make sure that it's going to cover that slit. So I just make it an eighth of an inch wider than the slit on both sides. And then I use a compass to trace out an arch at the top. Once I'm happy with the drawing of the door, I go and cut it out. And I use a Ulfa knife box cutter here. The nice thing about the Ulfa knife is that you can set it uh, to a very specific uh, extension. So you're not limited by the notches that the, that the blade clicks into. You can set it and then tighten it. So it's a really nice uh, cutting utensil here. And you do want to be careful here as you're using it. It's uh, rather sharp. And on these parts, I didn't do these with my daughter. So I don't let her handle these types of knives. Um, she's been involved at this point in the design process and the planning process. But this type of cutting where I'm using box cutters and uh, X-Acto knives and things like that, I don't let her do. So I just double check that it, it matches up here. Now I'm going to be using a magnet to make sure that it will stay closed. And I'm gonna have a magnet that I put inside the door. And then I'm gonna have another magnet that I put inside the lid of the box that lines up. And here I'm just notching it. I'm cutting a little notch so that the cardboard will flap up and down. Uh, so I'm making sure it's double, it may not be double corrugated. It's It's got the one layer of corrugation. It's a decently thick cardboard. So if you just cut about halfway through, it should flap up and down like that. You definitely want to test your magnets if you're going to use them in a project, especially a project that's designed to have a, a moving element. I purchased the pack of magnets I'm using here at Walmart. They have a nice craft section at my Walmart. Uh, I'm not sure if that's standard or if mine's kind of unique. Uh, Hobby Lobby, I imagine, would have a bunch of these, your, your crafting stores, and then they can also be purchased online. So magnets have a variety of strengths though so you do want to make sure that you're you're using something that's going to work well um if you have old refrigerator magnets you know test them if you're you know instead of just throwing them out set them aside and they can work well for projects like this but all i'm doing is i trace the magnet and i'm cutting out that section in the door so that the magnet can then just be inside the door and i'm going to put a layer of uh, glue and paper uh, all around the door, hide the corrugation, hide the magnet, and the magnet is just going to be discreetly kind of inside there. So it's fitting in there very well. And then eventually on the inside of the lid, once I have the door in place, I'll put a magnet on the other side. So here I use kind of a, I guess a paper mache kind of a technique where I'm just going to cover it in PVA. Now I'm deliberately not going to do the part that uh, is meant to bend, right? So I have that crease there. So you'll see that I'm up above that. But I just put a, a thin layer of PVA, the Elmer's glue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of scrap paper on that. So this will kind of, I was hoping would kind of make it really smooth. And then as I wrap it over the edges, it would hide the corrugation. So anytime you cut cardboard, when you look at the areas on the sides, you'll see holes where there's car there's corrugation within the cardboard. So you really don't want that corrugation visible in your final product. So my thought here is that I can fold these over and that will hide the corrugation. Now, you don't have to cover the whole piece. You could cut a thin strip of paper or cereal box and just glue that onto the corrugation, which in retrospect might be better. But then you do have to deal with hiding the magnet. There's other ways of doing that. The The problem with the way I'm doing this is that it did cause a little bit of warping. So I had to kind of bend the door back into place. I think in the final product, it was fine. It adds some stability. Um, if I had cut more slits in the parts that were wrapping around, I think it would have been better. Um, but overall, I think this approach is fine. So I do a layer of PVA. Uh, putting the paper on and then a thin layer of PVA over it. If you have warping on this piece, it's it's still not attached to the final project, so you can kind of work it back into place. Um, but you, you do have some options here. This is the route that I went on at this particular stage.
So then I just let it dry and see if there's any areas that need to be touched up, worked over. Um, if there's a, a section of the paper that's kind of sticking up, I end up going off and kind of shaving it down with the X-Acto blade and just kind of working in that glue. So again, I'm, I'm hoping for a smooth surface and for the most part, I accomplish it with maybe just a few blemishes. So I did a, a few steps off camera. And the reason for that is that I started working more closely, my daughter and I working together, and I didn't want to show her on film. But I think I can walk you through these steps here after the fact, and, and you shouldn't have uh, too much trouble with them. We took these towers, and at the bottom, we just glued them on to, this is just like cardstock granola bar um, box that we used. So I just uh, laid it flat, glued it on, and we didn't even cut it to size. So we just glued it on. And then after that glue dried, uh, we just took a, uh, a cutting utensil and just trimmed around it. So I wanted not to have this hollow. Um, so I thought it'd be sturdier. And then if you happen to see the bottom, you're not looking at a big hole. So we did that on both of the towers. Then we had a circular tower going next to this uh, rectangular box, which means the contact point was going to be very, very narrow if I just attached the round tower to the, the rectangular square box here. So I wanted to cut a little inset here that would make for a larger contact point. So I literally just took the tower set it on top. I did this with the lid in place because I didn't want it to interfere with the lid. So I put the lid on and we then set it where we wanted it to so it wouldn't interfere with the lid closing, but we wanted it to be fairly close. So it actually comes together nicely there. Traced it around. So once we had that line traced there using the square, Carpenter's speed square here, I just traced a, a straight line uh, that would connect at the top to the curved line. And then with my daughter standing by, I don't let my daughter's only seven, so I don't let her use the X-Acto knife, but I just cut out that slot to essentially just make for this cubby where the tower could go into. And I we didn't cut the bottom, so I, I left the bottom so that it would kind of overlap. And I knew that that would make it easier to glue in place. So then set it, test fit it, it seemed to fit well. And then what I did was I traced where it set at the bottom so I knew exactly where I needed my glue, put the hot glue there, and that was the first contact point. I just glued it in here at the bottom. And then once that started to set up and it was fairly sturdy, I laid it on its side and then just ran a bead of hot glue all along these contact points. So we did that on both sides. Before actually uh, gluing the tower in place, we added this poster board to the tower. In retrospect, I'm not sure that that step's totally necessary. It probably depends on what material you're making these towers out of. Now, initially I had thought that I could just have these towers out of three inch wide PVC pipe. You would probably need to spray paint prime them because you can't, you think you're gonna have a hard time just painting directly onto those. Uh, the nice part about those is they're smooth, they're perfectly circular, um, probably not that difficult to cut, or you might even be able to get them cut for you at like your big box store like Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, I was finding that they were uh, more expensive than I wanted to pay for this particular project. So when I went to Home Depot, it looked like you had to buy it in like a 10 to 12 foot uh, section and that that was like $40. Um, so I, I passed on that um, just because I was gonna have a bunch of extras sitting around and yeah, I wanted to kind of do this project on a budget. So the tops of our towers are gonna be these little cone shaped sections here. We made these out of cereal boxes and we used the compass here. So we did a couple of test ones and I'm not really um, you know, I'm okay at math. I'm certainly no mathematician. So I wasn't super familiar with uh, a quarter circle and what kind of cone that would make versus a half circle. So we ended up making a bunch of these and I found for like one that wasn't super tall that a half circle 
uh, was what we wanted. So I just literally took the compass here on the cereal box and just made a half circle. And I think the radius of the half circle ended up being about four inches. But again, I just kind of played around with it, made a bunch of test ones. So we cut this out and then you kind of have to curve it and work it into place. Now there is a little bit of a seam where they come together and we glued them together. We used hot glue and we kind of used this bracing piece here to, to get them initially together. And then I put a little bead of hot glue in there. So you do have that seam there. Um, I'm just going to put the seam at the back of the piece. So I don't think it's going to be too noticeable. You know, if you decorated this with ribbon or something else, you could cover that seam um, potentially. And then the reason we haven't glued these on is that the tower tops are purple, the tower and the body of the castle are going to be pink. So especially for a young child painting them, um, I think it's easier to glue them together after um, you have them painted. Otherwise you have to paint around them very carefully, go back and fix a bunch of mistakes. And she started painting the door as well. So that's where we're at. We're going to finish the uh, painting. And then once the painting's done, start gluing these into place. I'll show you how we add the other magnet so the door will stay closed uh, when it's in the closed position. Uh, but those are the steps that you, you didn't see us do just because we were working on them together. The paint that we're using is just uh, Apple Barrel and Ceramic Coat. These are essentially very similar products, just different brands but just acrylic paint. And you can get these in the craft section of your stores or your big craft stores. I also wanna point out, if you're working with any really glossy material, like for example, the cereal box, the exterior of the cereal box is, is actually fairly glossy. This won't take the acrylic paint very well. So the parts of the boxes that are gonna be exposed, I tend to try to use the other side, uh, which will take the paint directly without needing a primer. I did find that this poster board that I put over the round towers, uh, I did spray a little bit of just spray paint, white primer. Uh, the Rust-Oleum I generally find is a decent brand which can be purchased at Home Depot or similar stores. But yeah, so if you have the glossy parts exposed or using a glossy material, it'll need to be primed. If you find that the paint's not sticking, then you just need to do a spray on uh, primer. Even just a thin coat of that primer usually will kind of solve that problem. So my daughter and I did all the painting together off camera. Uh, painting is definitely the step that I think is the most kid friendly and seems to be the most fun. It did take several coats. So I think we ended up doing three coats of the pink and two or, two or three coats of the purple as well. And now it's time just to attach these with hot glue onto the top of the tower. So each one of these, I, I work it down in, in place um, pretty good. I wanted to have a nice, strong connection. The nice thing about hot glue versus other types of glue is the hot glue is going to set up really instantly. And it can be a downside too. You don't have much time to work with it. And if you misplace something, um, it does connect really essentially instantly. But I get these in place and then it's time to add the door. While adding the door, it's just critical that you're only gluing that part that's below the section that you cut. So you have a cut that's going halfway through the cardboard where the door is going to be able to go up and down like a hinge. So you only need the glue below that. If you get a glue above it, it's not going to open. So I glue it down so it's flush with the bottom of the lid of the box. Now I'm putting in the magnet on the other side. So I'm just letting the magnet find its spot. It should connect to the other magnet and then just putting a bead of hot glue uh, around the perimeter. And then I just do a couple of tests here, open and close, and it seems to be functioning fairly well. Not too strong, and it's also not slapping shut, but it does seem to be holding decently. So the last thing we're gonna add is a little bit of bling. I've got some of these um, little jewels that I picked up somewhere, a craft store, I don't know. I've been sitting on these for a while. They're flat on one side and then they're, they've got a little bit of a, a circular aspect on the other. So they're perfect for gluing onto flat surfaces. I'm just gonna present these to my daughter, let her pick out what she wants and we're gonna glue them on. So you'll see these in the final product, um, but I think it adds a nice touch.
All right, so the Castle Valentine's Day uh, box project here is all wrapped up. All I'm going to do is add my daughter's name here. We have some sticker decals, kind of gold and glittery. It'll should pop out. Last step, and then this is off to school. Uh, today, the teacher wanted to turn in by the 10th, so uh, actually ahead of the schedule here, which is kind of amazing. As requested, the working drop door drawbridge. I think the magnet is about right. Um, you know, if it was something that was going to be used long term, I think I would go with a little bit stronger. But this is going to be open and closed by second graders. So at the same time, you probably don't want it. So like you have to pry it open. And you probably also don't want it so that it's slamming shut. It'll stay upright. It's easy to drop down. Add the valentine. Boom. Um, goes in there. So... Hopefully you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.